Hello and welcome to a special edition of Bible Alive. I'm so glad you're here with us today. You know, today we're going to look at how Bible prophecy is being fulfilled in the times that we are living in. And Pastor Halmer, a great friend of mine with Keep the Faith Ministries, has a special report on events that are transpiring in our daily lives today, right around the world, and probably in our backyards, and how they relate to Bible prophecy. Let's go right now to our new set for Prophecy Now with Pastor Hal Mayer. Welcome to Prophecy Now. I'm Hal Mayer. Our first topic today is the worldwide economic crisis. The American economy is in deep trouble, and this affects most other parts of the world. Let's take a look at what some Americans are saying about the state of the economy. Because of the economy, our company has d done some cutbacks. It's rough with everything, the gas prices going up. <laughs> it's made things a struggle. I, I have five kids at home. Um, you know, jobs are harder to find. Oh, well, my grandpa doesn't have as much work because of the economy. I have several friends and, and family that are without jobs here in Michigan. There's so much that just needs to be changed with the way they ha they're handling the economy. Um, there's plenty of blame to share, but the whole fact that we continue to con want to win at any cost um, is driving the market that, that is being driven today. Not many people are buying houses because they don't have very much money and jobs, you know. So my dad had to um, get a trucking job, so now he's away from home most of the week. We only get to see him on weekends. And with his other job, he came home and in the evenings he could be with us, but with this job, he doesn't get to be with us very much. That's the way the economy has affected me. We're, we hit a pinnacle, and we kind of got blindsided. And no one thought to go out and say, hey, you know what, this is going to go down at some point in time. And guess what? It has. Americans' wealth shrank between April and June 2010 for the first time since early 2009. The Federal Reserve, the U.S. Central Bank, says household net worth fell 2.7 percent, or $1.5 trillion. The decline left Americans' net worth at $53.5 trillion. Net worth is the value of assets such as homes, checking accounts, and investments, minus debts like mortgages and credit cards. And before last quarter's decline, net worth had been growing slowly for four straight quarters. Americans' net worth would have to rise an additional 23% to return to its pre-recession peak of $65.8 trillion. Also, from January through June of 2010, the majority of employee requests for assistance in the United States has shifted from child care to housing for the first time in history. The requests stem from moving-related needs, such as finding an apartment. Two-thirds of those seeking an apartment were foreclosure-related. There is a huge housing dislocation going on. Demand for rental apartments for the first half of 2010 was stunning, according to a recent report, at 215,000 units, and the demand is expected to increase to 300,000 by the end of the year. In August, 42% of the unemployed have been without a job for more than half a year and that is up from 33% last year. America has changed dramatically in just two years and is quite different than it was in 2008. If the job market continues the way it is for a protracted period of time, serious consequences will develop. There's a growing sense of uncertainty and even despair. Americans have nearly stopped buying expensive cars, houses, and durable goods. Homes are for sale, but few people are buying them. Hundreds of thousands of households are in survival mode, buying only that which they absolutely need. The decline is palpable in many areas. But America is not the only place in the world with major problems. According to Dominique Strauss-Kahn, the head of the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, global labor markets are in dire straits, and the Great Recession has left behind a wasteland of unemployment. Strauss-Kahn sees social unrest in the future as people lose faith in public institutions. At a labor summit in Oslo, he said that he thinks a double-dip recession remains unlikely, but stressed that the world has not yet escaped a deeper social crisis. 
He called it a grave error to think that the West was safe again after teetering so close to the abyss last year. We are not safe, he said. A report at the joint summit of the International Labor Organization and the International Monetary Fund said that 30 million jobs had been lost since the crisis began, three quarters of them in wealthier economies. The Great Recession has left gaping wounds. High and long-lasting unemployment represents a risk to the stability of existing democracies, the report said. Spain has 20 percent unemployment. The U.S. has between 9 and 10 percent of unemployment. 2.8 million people are without jobs in the United Kingdom alone. Other Western nations are in similar condition. The study presented at the Labor Summit in Oslo cited evidence that victims of recession in their early 20s suffer lifetime damage and lose faith in public institutions. Historians say the last time that the wealth gap reached such skewed extremes was in 1928 and 1929, said Ambrose Evans Pritchard of the UK Telegraph, which was at the time of the Great Depression. Financial insecurity and despair could well lead to considerable civil unrest in Western countries. People who feel cheated out of their reasonable expectations can become violent particularly against those whom they think should have saved them from catastrophe, or whom they perceive as the cause of the problem. Jesus said that at the end of time, that on earth there would be distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. In other words, Jesus was predicting various types of distress, including economic distress of many nations. Seas in Bible prophecy involve multitudes of people, Jesus was also predicting social unrest. Today, many are perplexed and restless. They don't know what to do and are increasingly frustrated. As the Holy Spirit gradually is withdrawn, expect to see increasing violence, especially in the large cities. Could the global economic problem eventually be blamed on the lack of attention to religious and spiritual matters? and directed against those who resist or disobey laws designed to bring the nations back to God? The signs of the times reveal that what the Bible prophesied for the last days is absolutely true. Do you think Jesus is coming soon? When we come back, the church that has become a major political force in the U.S. Congress. Hi, I'm Larry, and I want to share something with you that comes straight from Remnant Publications, and I'm excited about it because it's helped strengthen my walk with God in a huge way, and I know it will help you too. And it's this new Apple iPod. It comes preloaded with a huge selection of Remnant's audiobooks, books like Desire of Ages, Great Controversy, and Steps to Christ. And it comes with the entire testimonies for the church set preloaded right on there. Let's take a closer look. For 25 years, I've had such a burden to get people to get truth-filled books in their homes. And I'm excited that Remnant Publications now has books on audio. And you know what? You can listen to them in an airplane. You can listen to them when you're driving to work. And in fact, I was just talking to a good friend of mine that told me this. Dwight, I just take my truck and I listen as I'm going to work. And when I shut off the truck, it's the first time in years that I can remember that I'd like to stay in the truck and just keep listening to them. Now as never before, people don't have to put it off. They can get the message, the Word of God, from their head to their heart. As small as these iPods are, you'll be amazed with the quality of sound that comes from them. We've taken extreme care in making these audio files as true to their original quality as possible. From the voices that you hear reading everything to the music and the sounds that you hear are just as beautiful as they should sound. Not only is the iPod easy to use, but it can also do so much more than a regular MP3 player. You can load it with iPod apps, calendars, calculators, text versions of Bibles. You can put all sorts of apps. The sky is the limit. I have to admit that I thought that there would be many who are intimidated by technology that would be afraid to try this new tool. But when people see how easy it is to use, they typically end up a happy user. You literally take it out of the box, plug in your headphones, point at the book you want to read, and you're listening. It really is that easy. We realize there are some people who already have their own iPods or MP3 players. And that's why we've also made these books available on flash drives like this one. 
people can easily copy the files from this small drive to their own MP3 player. I am so excited about this new technology, but it's not the technology that makes it so special. Like mom used to say, it's what's on the inside that matters most, and this iPod is no exception. Check this out. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The new fully loaded iPod has been such a blessing to me and many others, and Remnant wants it to be a blessing to you too. You can have all this in your daily devotions to prepare you and your family for the second coming. Be equipped to face the future with God's powerful message of faith and hope for today. Man, what a great day to share some books. One of the biggest problems that people make when they go out to share books is they try to share too many too soon. What we need to do is set some goals for ourselves. Now for some, setting a goal of sharing a book a day is a great way to start. And we think that's a tremendous idea. One book a day. Now you can work your way up from there, but start simple, don't overwhelm yourself. And make it a point to not let one day go by without sharing a book. So now that we have a goal of a book a day, let's talk about the type of book we share. We want to make sure that we are armed with the most effective books so that people will take the books we leave with them and read them. Now, some people have the mentality that because we're giving these books away, let's use the cheapest old book we have lying around. Well, that may be true to a point. We don't want to spend too much on books that we're giving away so we can give more away. But our goal isn't just to get books in people's hands, we want them to actually read the books we leave. I mean, some people take books that are so torn up and chewed up that when people receive them, they may receive them with a smile, but the next thing you know, they're throwing them in the trash can and they never do read your book. Thankfully, Remnant Publications provides books that will address both your wallet and still provide excellent quality books that will entice people to open them and read the truths contained within. Now, the first thing you want to look for in a good book is a nice cover. You take the cover on this book, America and Prophecy by Remnant. Now, there's a couple things about this. First, it's eye-catching. Now, I know you've heard uh, that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but the reality is most people do. And if the cover entices them, they'll want to look inside. The next thing we want to do is take a look inside the book. Make sure your paper is a nice, bright white. It makes a clear contrast in the book, and it makes the reading easier on the eyes. Notice also the font type. Uh, some people try to save money by printing in a smaller font. That way you can print a book in fewer pages, but it makes it harder to read. You take a book like this one here, and it's printed on what's commonly called newsprint. It's a yellowish paper, and the writing doesn't stick out well. And you notice the font size is very small. It's just not a book that people will typically want to read. Another thing is you want to make sure the book opens easily. Some books like this one will spring back. You try to open it, it shuts on you. It won't stay open as you read it. But if you take a book with a good binding, it'll open up easier. All of these things make a book easier to read and more likely that somebody will read them. Now, most importantly, whatever book you're sharing, whatever person you're sharing with, you want to ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit to direct you in selecting the right book for the right person at the right time. And now that you're equipped with the right tools, you can join us to reach the world one book at a time. Welcome back to Prophecy Now. The Wall Street Journal commented that the Roman Catholic Church in America has emerged as a major political force. Behind the scenes lobbying, coupled with a grassroots mobilization of Catholic churches across the country, has led a decidedly liberal, democratically dominated U.S. House of Representatives to enact a law in harmony with conservative Roman Catholic policy. Though generating howls of protest, the Catholic Church played a central role 